What are the most rewarding acts of worship that one can do in the last 10 nights of Ramadan? And that's important, right? Because it's not about how we began, but it's about how you end. Uh, and um, let's look at this. Acts of worship we're doing all the time, whether it's reading the Quran or helping your neighbor or um, you know, doing uh, the sadaqah in, in different areas, whether local or abroad, or mentoring children or helping people with their exams or whatever. Everything that has the intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then when it's a specific act of worship, then in done accordance with the, the, the sunnah of the Prophet, then that of course is an act of worship. And we increase that and we add the Ramadan flavor to it. So of course we're fasting, so that that's another extra extra act of worship. And we're more careful with our tongue and with our with our eyes and everything. We're far more uh, in control and we're far more disciplined. And then of course we add the night prayer. So we've been doing all of that. So what changes actually at this time? Well, we have a, um, a clue from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, Aisha radiallahu anha said that when the Prophet ﷺ, uh, would be preparing uh, the Dakhal al-Ashr, when the last 10 nights would enter, uh, he would tighten his belt. Yani, that's it now, time for serious, no yani, uh, uh, other stuff or anything else. Um, he would uh, stay awake the night and he would waken his family, which indicates that before it wasn't a really intense process. It was, yeah, any, you know, there was definitely time for sleep and rest, but now it's the time to now, you know, cut it out. So in actual fact, what I would say, what this hadith tells us is that there's no change in the acts of worship, but rather an increase. So we basically take the next level. As I said before, beast mode. Now, whatever we've done before, we do it more better, more pure, more determined, more patient, more sacrifice. Any possible place that we can sacrifice, that's what we do. So whether you can take time off work, organize holiday, whether you can cut down on sleep, whether you know you cut down your TV, the internet, social media, the phone, you start to isolate yourself. That's why itikaf is sanctioned for these last 10 days because you're isolating yourself. You're doing everything the same. So you're not going to read an extra book or an extra thing or do an extra prayer, actually what you're doing more uh, 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 are the same acts of worship but more of, but better of, but higher quality, higher quantity. Everything is taken to the next level. And that's why you can see that the family is being woken up. So normally they'd be asleep during uh, some of that night. And the whole night is being revived. Ahya Layla. So the whole 10 nights are being focused on. And in it's interesting that Aisha said that it's the whole 10 nights and not just the Laylatul Qadr. And of course, the correct position about Laylatul Qadr, the, the night of power, is that it's moving. You know, it's not determined every single year on whether it's the 21st or the 23rd or even a 22nd, 24th, because obviously odd and even is dependent upon when you start or whether you start from the beginning or whether you start from the end. So all of these last uh, days and nights need to be treated the same. Um, if someone was to say to me, okay, there must be something extra, there must be something new. Then I'd say, okay, we do have some weak hadith, but certainly the actions of the Salaf that uh, in between, in the last 10 nights, in between Maghrib and Isha, they would take a ghusl. And that ghusl, yani, before the Isha prayer starts, is, a, is, is an indication of seriousness and focus. And of of course, that purity that they are taking, yani that that opportunity to worship Allah and Allah's generosity and extra generosity, uh, uh, very seriously, and so that's a nice touch. And the other thing I think is du'a. Uh, du'a Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves is a pure, it's the purest act of ibadah that can be because when you turn to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala alone, then that's the essence of tawheed and it's the rejection of shirk and asking other people who can't give it to you. And so when you're asking Allah alone, Allah loves that. Allah loves to give, so you should ask. And because you're asking in the last ten nights, the greatest time of the year, the, the Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is responsible responding in a way that he uh, has increased his mercy, has increased his forgiveness and his and his reception uh, to dua. And any one of these nights could be led to Al-Qadr and that's going to absolutely take it to the next level. So you'll increase in your dua. And the Prophet Sallallahu of course told us that beautiful dua, Allahumma innaka afoon tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, you are the pardon and you love to forgive and pardon, so forgive me. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shame that we translate it so poorly in English because the actual meaning of this hadith is huge. We don't have time to talk about that now. Pardoning is so much greater than just forgiveness. And it's something that subhanAllah all of us are looking forward to try and achieve in these last 10 nights. So in summary, it's not that the acts of worship change but the intensity, the intensity changes, our focus, that, that wanting to grab that opportunity. And we should all do that, of course, every night of these last 10 nights.